this is going to be a wild one, but I think I actually managed to revive the uh, Bullshit Maker ZR, and I'm going to show you what I found, but before I do that, I need to address a couple of things. So first of all, if you are not aware of this whole Wonder Maker saga, uh, just go and find my previous videos. This will give you some idea of the issues that this machine has. I didn't even cover the whole beta testing team quitting on them and, and people stepping down from the company because there's just way too much going on to cover everything. So if you, if you are invested or want to find out more, you can just Google stuff, have some big laughs. I did not pay for this printer, I did not back it on a Kickstarter, I didn't even know it existed, but Saint Smart sent one to me uh, for reviewing, and I posted everything that I saw so far, which, again, if you haven't seen, just go and check it out. It's an absolute dumpster fire, and obviously there was a lot of comments, especially on Facebook, for people who were angry with me for some reason, uh, because I showed the way that they are. And one comment stuck with me, and I'm not even going to show it on the screen, because I do not want to give this guy any screen time whatsoever, but the gist of the comment was that since I got the printer for free, I should be grateful and keep quiet on any issues that I find because I didn't pay for it so I have nothing to complain about. Which makes absolutely zero sense. I hate to describe myself as an influencer of any sort but I do have somewhat bigger following and I am aware that some people might get influenced by the things that I do recommend or do not recommend. That's just the way it works. So yeah, that comment made zero sense to me because, because I feel that this is absolutely my responsibility to show the things exactly that they are and skipping on any negative comments about any company just because they gave me free stuff or they paid me for a review. That is not something that I did and that's not something I will ever do. I do get a lot of free stuff sent to me for reviews. That's the way it works. And I like to show when the printing goes right. And if anything goes wrong and it is a significant issue, not just some user error or like basic adhesion issue, I always show that too. As awesome as 3D printing is, you cannot expect everything to go right 100% of the time. Things will go wrong, doesn't matter if it's bamboo, if it's Creality, Anycubic, Dashforge, Elego, that does not matter. There is no such thing as a perfect printer. And yes, most of my channels is basically me showing things that went right, because most of the time they do, and when they fail it's a simple issue or user error. This is not the case with this machine. So to the guy that left a comment, if what you typed is really what you believe in, you are an absolute fucking walnut. People have invested a lot of money into this company. This alone is almost a $700 printer. And I had this for over a week now, and I managed to print about five of those, which is the file that comes with the printer, and just a bunch of first layers because the stuff kept failing. Some looked okay, some not so much. And yes, this is the same filament on the same printer, with the same file. And I also have to clarify, this is a production model. This is not a beta test unit. This is a finished product that you can buy on Amazon or Saint Smart right now, and this is what you're going to get. There is no documentation, there are hardware issues, there are software issues. And software issues is what we are going to talk about today, because this was the biggest problem for me to get it going. And I feel really dumb for not thinking about it sooner, but it is what it is. But anyway, I'm going to give you a quick recap because this is important. So if you saw the previous videos, you know that I was not able to get this printer past printing the first layer of this exact same model that's printing right now. It would feed the filament, print the first layer, and then anytime it would try to change the color, it would jump the extruder completely. The extruder is extremely tight, and I showed that in previous video, and then Lightspeed left a comment saying that this is pretty much copy of Bamboo Extruder, which got me thinking, and I took it apart uh, because I had the uh, hardened extruder kit for P1SX1, doesn't matter. One of those but as you can see here this was not an exact fit so that didn't work and i tried different tensioning on the extruder because it goes from extremely stiff to very stiff there's not much adjustment over here even though the screw is like a mile long and every time the same thing happened it would jump completely and just show the uh feeder errors and at one point it stopped printing completely it wouldn't even print these and would give me the same error all the time even though i checked the voltages on the feeders and they were engaging at the right time and the voltages were correct they are working but that was the code so I did factory reset. I replaced the PTFE's top ones and from this ridiculous filament separator because the included ones are not the best quality. They, re they are really stiff, but most importantly, there is a lot of friction. I greased up one of the bearings be because it was almost completely dry and, I was, and it was grinding. The belt tensioning is all over the place and I didn't really have time to figure out how to do the tensioning adjustment because, like I said, there is no documentation for this printer. Right, and it's kind of hard to show right now, but this roller over here, the bottom belt is really loose compared to the top one, and it has less than two hours of printing on it, and it's already starting to eat away at the belt. After I did all that, I managed to get it to print this again. So my next step was to try and print this model, and again it would fail. It would jump the extruder, throw the codes, stop printing. So with some of the hardware issues addressed, I moved on into trying to figure out if the issue lies in the software, and this is what I found. If you read the instructions or you go on the website, they are recommending you use Wonder Print Orca, which is really standard right now. Not weird going on here the problem is i installed this wonder orca whatever it's called this is actually the model that i'm printing and all the other versions of orca would install as a separate instance so like you would get a separate icon and all of them would have their own settings 
But this one basically overwritten everything in my regular Orca that I had installed because I added the printer right here and, and to connect it to the internet you have to type in the AP and the uh, port to connect to Clipper Fluid, whatever it is. And after I did that and I opened my regular Orca, all of the settings all of a sudden were here. Which is weird and never happened on any other version of Orca for any other company. But then you go here and you're trying to log into your account like you would with literally anything else. And you can see this is the Wondermaker logo. You press login, and what do you see? Bamboo Lab and Make World account. And if you click on any of those, it actually takes you to the Bamboo website. So all they did was slap this logo on and messed everything up because this is the G code. Actually, I'll switch to this view because it's easier to show. But to show you what the issue is, I'm going to go step by step. So, so Wonder Slicer generated codes starts by going to the Prime Tower and just wiping a little bit. And after that, it starts the ramming uh, slash retracting sequence, which is this one. And this is exactly where the problem lies. So if you don't know what those values means in G-code, we just need to look at the E and F value for now. So the E value is basically extrusion in millimeters. So negative value is going to be retraction and any positive number is going to be extrusion. And the F value is feed rate, which is basically speed. And this is shown in millimeters per minute. So if you look at the very first line that the print printer is instructed to do. It wants to retract 15 millimeters of filament at the feed rate of 6000, which is 100 millimeters per second. So 15 millimeters is exactly one and a half centimeters. And at 100 millimeters per second, this is like 0 0.15 seconds total. So it's expected to basically retract 15 millimeters of filament within a blink of an eye. And then it's immediately followed by another command for retracting, which is 55 millimeters of filament at feed rate of 5400, which is 90 millimeters per second. So basically five and a half centimeters of filament within just over half a second. And then there's two more retractions on top of that. These are much slower, but that doesn't matter because at this point, the filament is already completely grinded and mangled into extruder. If you add this all up, this code basically expects the printer to retract 10 centimeters of filament in 1.4 seconds. And to visualize this, you know how long 1.5 seconds is, and this is exactly 10 centimeters of filament. And then the code goes on, but that does not matter because at this point, you get an error code and the printer pauses. So now for comparison, if we move to the Orca, one this is the whole code the first thing it does is extruding two millimeters of filament just to remind you the wonder one was trying to do 15 and you can see there's no feed rate here and i am 99 percent positive that if there's no feed rate given the printer will use previously stored value which in this case was 1800 that's 30 millimeters per second and that's it so you got 10 centimeters at ridiculous speeds two millimeters at just regular speeds and then obviously it's followed by filament and g-code and filament g-code so uh, that's going to be the feeders on the filament system retracting the old spool and then loading the new one and after all of this it just goes back to printing so this is the issue that i was having they basically sabotage their own printer with their own bad software that's why i feel kind of silly why i did not even consider that at the beginning which kind of circles back to the common dimension in the beginning you cannot expect people to pay 700 bucks and receive this especially if this is their first printer and expect them to do all of the troubleshooting and finding out the issues that should have been ironed out before this printer even shipped. If you want a DIY project, you might as well just buy a Voron and be done with it. And to address a few other people who said that nobody cares how bad this ER is because they are waiting for the Ultra, which is the one with the extra tool heads. This, with hardware issues, software issues, company that's falling apart, printers that are being sold at retail, while people who pledge on Kickstarter have not received their units yet, without any documentation, basically no software support, no replacement parts available, and you expect that the Ultra One is magically going to be an amazing machine, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you are delusional. If they cannot get something as simple as this right, then there is no way in hell that the Ultra is going to be a good machine. And I wish I could tell you some more good news, but this is the reality here, unfortunately. So yeah, if this one manages to finish this print, I will make a video out of it and post it. And if it fails, I'll do that as well. Right, see ya.